In today's video, I'm gonna be taking a standard piece of pine like this and showing you how to turn it into a beautiful barn beam that looks like it's been sitting out in the elements or inside of a barn for 80 years. All right, guys, let's get started. There's gonna be axes, there's gonna be torches, there's gonna to be sand, there's restoration tools. Let's go. All right, so I'm grabbing my trusty axe here and we're gonna hit this with some axe strokes. So I'm just gonna put on a pair of goggles and some gloves and we're gonna to go to town on this. Next thing is important to do, clamp it in place on the bench so that when you hit it with the axe, once the axe digs in, it doesn't force it forward and keep moving as you're trying to hit the next stroke. Take the stroke, you want to make sure you hit that blade on an angle where it can dig into the wood. Now don't worry about missing and bouncing off, but you want to make sure that you hit high and then low to make a pattern just to stay with that uh, consistency of an actual hand hewn look. Now you want to remember when you're taking these axe strokes, you want to let the axe do the work. So just let the weight of the head of the axe hit the wood. Just swing it from the base and let it come through and dig into the wood. When you come to the end of the board and you finish hitting it with the axe, Take the axe and just scrape it along those strokes that you just dug into the wood with and just remove and clear out any of those chips that'll be sticking up. Then you want to flip the board over and make sure you continue this evenly on all sides. Okay, so the axe was step, I'm going to say step two because when we glued everything together, we used the restoration tool with the drum sanding wheel to round over and edge all those corners and make little divots and dents to make it appear that that was actually a solid piece. So the axe was step two. Uh, now step three is the fun part, which is using the torch to set these babies on fire. Now we're not really gonna set them on fire, we're gonna keep the torch moving so that we don't set them on fire. So basically we're just gonna heat them up until we get that nice brown tone. But the main thing here is, basically when you do this, it burns off all these little edges and, and um, wispy little pieces that you have laying around, but it also, when it burns the wood, it actually burnishes it and gives it a seal. So when later when I rip everything off with the restoration tool with the wire wheel, you're going to see all those burn marks come off, leaving some of them behind, but it's going to leave a certain texture, and that texture will absorb the stain perfectly evenly and not give us any problems like you do often see with pine. All right, so let's, uh, let's set these babies up and I do recommend you do this outside. This is not something you want to do in your house. It's very dangerous to do in your house. You could cause a fire, an explosion. So make sure you stay away from any kind of uh, combustible materials besides the wood itself being combustible. That's why we're going to keep it moving. So let's open the garage, head outside, set it up on some blocks. Now there's some snow out there, so I'm not concerned about that because I'm raising it up off the floor. I'm not going to have it on the snow and the wet ground. And we're going to torch these babies. Okay guys, so that was the fun part with the torch. Now, the next part is not so much fun. It's kind of like the equivalent of sanding. So basically, I've switched to a 
wire wheel here on the restoration tool. And the most important thing that you want to do here is when you're ripping this with the wire tool and making that texture is you want to go in the direction that is opposite the chip of the axe stroke. So we had the axe hitting in this direction. So we want to have the wire wheel ripping up this blunt cut here. So basically what's going to happen is as I go over the axe mark, this is the smooth entry of the axe. This is the part that's chipped. The wire wheel will catch in that chip and rip that out and any other soft or sap woods along with it and make a nice texture. So I have it hooked up to dust collection. I'm going to throw on some ear protection and we're going to scuff this thing up. Okay, so I brought you guys in closer because I want you to hear this because it might not be that visible on camera. I can see it in the lens, so you should be able to see it. But um, listen to the difference in the texture. Here's a piece that I haven't touched yet. So it's smooth and there's no catching of my nails. And here's the piece that I hit with the restoration tool. See the difference? Smooth. That's jagged. Let's see if I can get you even closer. You can, you can really see the difference in texture when you look this close. See the, all the softwoods being ripped up, yet it's smoothing it out. It's also blending in everything very nicely. So now this will take the finish really nice, the stain. And uh, this is ripping off any little glue spots. I see I'll, I'll do a little more work over here with this glue spot. And I'll just continue. So here's just a quick close-up of how everything turned out. You can really see as I get closer with the camera, the ridges here. That's really great definition and they're real great character. This is definitely the way to go if you want that hand-hewn look as if these beams were milled the old style way by hand with an axe. Obviously, it would have been a lot better if I had a broad axe, but if you've seen the price of what a broad axe costs right now, I'll stick with the $30 Home Depot special. Now, if it were up to me and I was doing this for myself, you may not be able to see because of the bright lights in here, but it, it has that, those burn marks that are coming through here with a clear finish, leaving it just like this with no stain at all. That clear finish would really just highlight this and accent all of these heavy burn marks. And it's just a really good look. And you've probably seen how great it looks when I did the close up and I'll also post a photo of it. But since they wanna match everything, the mantle, I'm gonna be doing floating shelves and these beams are all gonna be a dark walnut stain. So more so than having these burn marks protrude through the stain, they sealed up the wood for me so that the stain will take perfectly and there'll be no blotching or anything like that. All right guys, so I really hope that everyone enjoyed this video. These are the steps that I take to make the barn beams look like they've been distressed and hand hewn, which is basically the way they used to make beams back in the days with uh, a broad axe and chop them up to flatten them out and loggers would use these techniques and then they, when the beams went up and the, or the posts went up and they would sit there in the barn for however many years there was no heat or anything like that would open to the elements there'd be water leaks and stuff and and that's how these beams would get their looks just from the, the aging process of mother nature and uh, basically leaving the hand technique that they used to hand plane and chop them with an axe to get them to the square shape that they needed, which is, it's just a really cool look. And if you haven't seen the video that I did with the mantle in this style, I have that on my channel. It was just a, not that long ago, a couple of videos back. Um, I'll post the link in the description so that you can see it, or I'll put it on the end of the screen here up in the corner. So you could just click on that if you're interested. Okay guys, so I really hope you liked the video. I hope you got something out of it. If you choose to do it, um, the, the most fun part obviously is hitting it with the torch. You just got to be very careful with that. You don't go overboard, leave it in one spot too long because you could set it on fire and then you have another problem on your hands. All right guys, so that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. 
hit the subscribe button. Don't forget to hit that picture of a notification bell. That'll notify you every time I upload a video. Trying to get these out on a weekly basis. I have a ton of more videos to do. We have a lot more things to build. A lot of tools and things that I need to go through that I just got in the uh, the mail. Uh, I want to be setting those up with you and show you how I square things up. So whole process. A lot of builds, a lot of tools, everything's coming. All right, guys, so stick with me on this channel here. We're going to be moving forward with a lot more stuff. Also, hit the thumbs up. Give the video a like if you enjoyed the video. That'll help circulate it, and we'll make the channel stronger if YouTube puts it out there so more people will come to the channel, which makes me want to make more videos. All right, guys, so I will see you next time. I'm not sure if it's going to be in the shop which I think I'm going to be doing some kind of a, a tool setup. But if not, uh, then we'll be at the job site joining these together and getting ready to install them. The rest of the finish is going to be done on the job site. I'm going to be doing the stain there and the finish. And that's due to the fact that not only for the joinery that I want to blend in that butt joint, but at the same time, you can see here on the post, this gets wrapped around steel post and then the opposite piece that closes it up that has to be mated to it to close in that steel post and make it look like it's always been there holding up the house and so I want to be able to uh, basically hit it with that wire wheel tool and, and dent it and make it look exactly the way it should as if it was a solid piece so we got a lot to do all right guys that's it so don't forget to join me next time and hit that subscribe button